So we find ourselves in section 1.4. which the book calls continuity and one-sided limits, but in typical fashion, I would say this author puts the cart before the horse. Really, it's one-sided limits and continuity. Okay. So, this limiting procedure is that thing that we were talking about, that LIM and then as X goes to some value that I pull out of a hat and then I give you some expression that has some weird problems with it. <clears throat> that kind of idea. So what it is, what that is uh, talking about is we're trying to see what the function does close to but not at a point. Okay, close to but not necessarily at a point. So then in the case of calculus 1, 24, 17, uh, you can get close to a point from the left side or from the right side. Okay, so then this is what it means by one-sided limit. So a limit from the left or a limit from the right. My mic is misbehaving. Okay, so then just to illustrate this with a picture, how about something like this? So I'll draw an axis. Put a couple tick marks in each direction, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So then now I'm going to draw some kind of lovely picture of a function that I'll draw in red. So how about open there, goes off that way, open here. Goes off that way, and then I'll do a closed dot here. Okay, now all of these, all of the points, all the obvious points, they all fall on integers. Okay, so then this is everything on this particular drawing is falling on integers. <coughs> so I have a question for you now. I'm going to write something, and I want you to try and tell me what it is that I'm asking. I've written something like it before already in this class. So the limit as x goes to 2 and then something like that of f of x like so assuming that this right here this graph represents the graph of a function f of x okay so what is it that i'm asking for over here this thing yes along the graph where does the graph go so specifically what, where does the height of the graph go? Why, the y value of the graph go? So in this case, on this particular function, can you see that it is negative 1? It's negative 1. Okay, now, the limit as x goes to 2, and now I want to say from the right, so how do I signify with, with a positive exponent like so, of f of x? And so then what is the correct answer in this case? 2. All right. Now, these two lines that I've written, they give you a lot of information about the function, but close, close to 2. But they don't tell you all of the information about what the function is doing. Okay, because there's one more thing that you can do besides computing the limit from the left and the limit from the right. What else can you do? Evaluate. Right. You can evaluate. So then that is denoted in this way. Okay, and then what is the answer in this case? 3. Right, so we have these, these different things here. Right? We have a limit from the left, a limit from the right, and an evaluation. Okay, so then now I could maybe ask this question. What is this, what is this uh, sentence asking about? Right, so then there's, there's three limits now on the page. Right? There's the limit as you approach from the left. There's the limit as you approach from the right. And what is this other limit saying? It's saying I'm not going to be specific about left or right. Okay, now, my question to you is, 
is do you approach a single y value as you approach x? No, you do not approach a single y value as you approach x because if you approach from the left, you get negative 1, and if you approach from the right, you get positive 2. So then the limit, what is the correct phrase to say here? The limit does not exist, right? Which I will write as D and E. Okay, now I'd like to say again that the limit is not equal to does not exist. Okay, don't write, don't write equal does not exist. It's not equal to does not exist. Okay, it just does not exist. So any question about this? So here's an example where we, we computed a left limit. The left limit existed and was equal to negative 1. We computed the right limit. It existed. It was equal to positive 2. We computed the evaluation. It was equal to 3. And the limit generally doesn't exist. So any questions about this example? OK, so then now let's, let's do this, exa this similar example to this, except let's do it quite rapidly. So I'll save this real quick. OK. So I'll do this. It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I wish I could do that with pencil and paper. Okay, so now I'm going to take this similar example. Okay, except now I'm going to modify it slightly. Okay, so something like this. <coughs> So I'll give you a moment to catch up to that. Okay, so then now, right, what is the, what is the point that, is ob that I'm obviously talking about here? Right, the, the point that I'm obviously going to compute a limit at? 2, right? That's the point that's interesting here. Okay, so the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x, again, assuming that this is the function, the graph of the function f, is what? Negative 1, good. So the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x is going to be what in this case? Negative 1. Okay, so then how about now I'll say this, the limit as x goes to 2 generally. So what is the answer now? What's the answer now? Negative 1. Right? The answer is negative 1. So then, so then, and I'll state this formally in just a moment. But now, some of you see this, this open hole and this, this filled in circle down here, and it's kind of disturbing to you. Right? Okay, so what you need to understand about the, what limit is, is limit is a relaxation. Limit is related to evaluation. And we're going to see exactly how it's related to evaluation. In many cases, computing a limit is equivalent to evaluating, meaning you don't actually have to even compute a limit. You just plug in. But that's not the case here, because the limit of this graph as you go to 2 is negative 1. But the evaluation of this graph at 2 is what? Meaning, what do you get if you plug in 2? Negative 3, right? So. So the limit from the left exists and is negative 1. The limit from the right exists and is negative 1. Therefore, the limit generally exists and is negative 1. But the evaluation, the evaluation is negative 3. So in a sense, you might kind of look at this graph and say, I don't know, that graph doesn't look right. Someone, someone took this point and put it in the wrong place. I just want to come by and just sort of whoop, I want to move it up and put it in the right place. Right, that's sort of like a human intuition thing going on there. And we're going to do that in just a moment. Right, so then a human might say, well, that, that point's just in the wrong spot. OK, so any questions before we move on? OK, so these were pictures. So now we need to do an example uh, that's not a picture, but rather linguistic. OK, so then how about, I don't know, 4x plus 3 when x is less than 5? And how about 2x plus 8 when x is greater than 5? Okay, so here's, here is a, a function. 
So then now, how about this, this thing that I'm hovering over, 4x plus 3? Uh, if you were just to consider 4x plus 3 just by itself, then what does the graph of this thing look like? A straight line sloping upward, right, with slope 4, right? So it slopes up with slope 4. How about this other one, 2x plus 8? That is also a, a straight line with slope 2. So if you were to graph this function, if you were to graph this function, then what you would see, what you would see is two lines. You would see two lines. And on the left side of 5, you would see a line with slope 4. And on the right side of 5, you would see a line with slope 2. And the question, one of the questions that I can ask is sort of, did I make these lines meet, right? Did I glue them together or did I, I miss? Right, so then there's a couple different possibilities, right? It might look like, it might look like this, right? A line of slope, a line of slope 4. And then here's x is 5, and then I sort of miss, right? And then it changes to slope 2. So there's two lines. Maybe they meet like this. They don't quite meet. Maybe I got really lucky in my random guessing here and made it to where they actually meet, like so. And do they meet? Okay, so the answer is maybe. Right? But can you see that there's a, there's a little bit of a question here as to what's happening? Okay, so we're going to answer this now. So the first question is, I want you to compute the limit as x goes to 5 from the left of f of x. Okay, now the way, since this is the first time you're seeing this, I will do it. The only way to proceed is to say, well, that this is the limit as x goes to 5 from the left. Because we are approaching 5, because we're approaching 5, and because we are specifically saying that we are approaching from the left, that means that I'm allowed to choose one of these definitions. Which definition am I allowed to replace f with? 4x plus 3. Right, I can replace it with 4x plus 3. Because 4x plus 3 is the definition that is giving me values to the left of 5. Okay, now, this particular limit, can you compute this limit? Yes, what do you get? 23. Okay, so I'll write it up top, like so. 23. Okay, now I want you to do an analogous thing here. So now, the limit as x goes to 5, now instead from the right of f of x. And I'd like to emphasize to you that the amount of writing that I've done here, writing the limit symbol very carefully and all of that, that is what's being graded. Okay, I, I think it's great if you understand what this is saying and that you sort of can see it in your head without writing limits and things like that. That's great. You won't receive credit if you don't write limit. Okay? <clears throat> Good. So then I should say that this is the limit as x goes to 5 from the right. Now, because I'm saying that I'm going to 5, and because I am explicitly saying that I am only approaching from the right, then I can replace f of x with one of its definitions. Okay, which one can I replace it with? 2x plus 8. Okay, now, can you compute that limit? It's 18. Okay, so then now I have a question for you, 3. How about this, the limit as x goes to 5? of f of x. So what's the story? So I, I'll, say, I'll say some facts that we've established. The limit from the left exists and is equal to 23. The limit from the right exists and is equal to 18. Those are facts that we have established. So what about the limit generally? It does not exist limit does not exist. <coughs> okay, now someone explain to me in a sentence why the limit does not exist. That's right. So then, what we've said is that from the left it's 23, from the right it's 18. If it's going to exist, the left and right limits must both exist, and they must also be equal. Equal. Okay, so then now, the last question is, is how about this? 
How about F evaluated at 5? So what do you think? It's undefined. Okay, I'd like to emphasize that it is undefined. It is not equal to undefined. Right? Nothing is equal to undefined. Is there any question about this example? Any question about this example? Okay, so <coughs> let's do another example. So here's an entertaining example. So how about I give you f of x is equal to f of x is equal to x squared plus a when x is less than 2. And how about 5x plus 3 when x is greater than 2? Uh, just greater than 2. Well, we'll say greater than or equal to 2. Like so. Okay. Now, this, this thing right here, 5x plus 3, if you were to consider it by itself and graph it, what would its graph be? 5x plus 3. A straight line. Okay, great. Now, a is just some constant. So, if you were to consider x squared plus a by itself, if you were to consider x squared plus a by itself, and you were to graph it, it would be a what? A parabola. A parabola. And then, what is the, what is the effect of changing a on that parabola? What's the effect? A shift. A what kind of shift? A vertical shift. Right? So then, in a sense, I can choose how high I want the parabola to be by choosing a, the value a. So then now, what's happening here is I took this parabola, x squared plus a, and I took this line, 5x plus 3, and I cut them both at, at x is equal to 2. On the left side, I took the parabola. On the right side, I took the line. So then we're going to have some kind of graph that looks something like this, right? It's going to be a parabola-looking thing, and then a cut, and then a line. Right, so then that'll be open, and this one will be closed. Right, so it's like I took a line and a parabola and glued them together. Or I'm going to attempt to glue them together. So does everybody see what, what this function is? All right. So now, when you're analyzing a function like this, one thing that I didn't do on the last example, but I'm going to do now, which is helpful, is I'm going to draw a number line. <coughs> I'm going to draw a number line. And I'm going to mark everywhere the function sort of changes its, personal, its personality, right? So then there are two definitions here, right? The function changes from a parabola thing to a line thing. And where does that change occur? At x is 2. Okay, so at x is 2, something happens here. So then now, what of these two definitions, x squared plus a and 5x plus 3, what definition am I, am I using to the left of 2? I'm using x squared plus a over here. Okay, and then over here, what definition am I using? 5x plus 3. Good. So any questions about the interpretation of this number line? All right, so then now I have a question for you. First question, what is the limit? What is the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x? And you must write this in the fully verbose way that we did the last example. <coughs> okay. So then, because we're explicitly saying we're going to 2, and because we're explicitly saying we're approaching from the left, then I can come up to my number line, look at the fence post, x is 2, and then look at the definition I wrote to the left and see that that is x squared plus a, like so. And is that a limit that you can compute? Yes, it is, right? So then what is it? 4 plus a. It's 4 plus a. Whatever a is, is 4 plus a. Okay, so now 2. How about the limit? The limit as x goes to 2 from the right. Okay, so in the, in the interest of time, I'll just go ahead and do it. And so then this is the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. So 
Since I am approaching two, and because I have explicitly said that I am only approaching from the right, then I can go to my number line, look at the fence post x is two, and select the definition that is to its right, which is five x plus three on this particular problem, so five x plus three. So then this, is that a limit I can do? Yes, it is equal to 13. Okay, so now, here's the third question that I have for you. Okay, but it's different than the third question of the previous one. I want you to find the value of a, right, of the, of the constant a, such that the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x exists. Okay, now, that's just a linguistic statement, but so in order for you to understand what I'm actually asking is take a look at this picture up here, this just very rough sketch where I took a parabola piece and a line piece, and are they currently sort of glued together? Are they meeting? No, not currently. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that the parabola part has x squared plus a, and what I'm saying is, is I want you to hold the line still and move the parabola so that they meet so that they meet. Does everyone understand what geometrically I'm asking? Okay, so geometrically that's what I'm asking. Algebraically, what does that translate into? Sorry? Yes, right? What's necessary for the limit to exist? The left and the right limit must be the same. That is what's necessary, right? So what, what we're doing is we need to solve the equation, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x. That is what is necessary. Okay, so on the one hand, that means that the left limit we already computed is 4 plus a, and the right limit is equal to what? 13. So then, can you solve for a? Right, I hope so, right? It's 9. Okay. So it's 9. So 9 is the value of a. 9 is the value of a that I grab hold of the parabola and I move it until a is 9. And then the line and the parabola meet. The line and the parabola meet. Okay, now the last question is... Ah, well, it'd be a good idea. So, I mean, this would be fine, but maybe just to be clear... I'll say, so what we're saying is that we want x squared plus 9 when x is less than, uh, what was it, 2? And 5x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 2. It has just a strange and sort of unfortunate coincidence. My 9s look very similar to my a's. <laughs> but that's just a coincidence. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay, good. So then the last question, the last question is for, what is the evaluation, F evaluated at 2? It's 13, right? So then which one, which of these definitions am I supposed to select? Which one? 5x plus 3. Why am I supposed to select 5x plus 3? Right, so then there's two of them. There's x squared plus 9 and there's 5x plus 3. Why am I supposed to select the second one instead of the first? Right, okay, so then now, I want to plug in 2. Is 2 less than 2? No, 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 so it's not the first definition. It's not the first definition. Is 2 greater than or equal to 2? Yes, so it must be the second definition, right, so then this... That's the constraint, so then this is equal to 13. Okay, so then now, if we, when we made the choice a is equal to 9, essentially what we did is we said, okay, here's what's happening at 2. The parabola does this business and is open, right? The parabola part is open. You can see, why, why is it open? Because it's less than 2, right? So then the parabola doesn't grab a point there. But then the line, right, we made it line up just with the line, so I fill that point in, and it's like this. 
Okay, because the line says greater than or equal to 2, so then that one is filled in. So then now, if you were sort of on a skateboard or whatever, then you could, you could skateboard over this graph without falling off of a cliff. Right? You'd feel a bump right, as you go over this. Right? And maybe if you're not very good at the skateboard, that would be the end of your trip. But, <laughs> like me, I'm not any good at one. But you could, you could ride over this, right, and you wouldn't be falling off a cliff. Whereas, whereas, uh, on this example, right, if you were to ride a skateboard on this, well, good luck to you. Okay? So any question about this? You're good. <coughs> Okay, so then now, I'm going to say one remark that I've sort of been already saying, but I'm going to say it formally. It is this. The limit as x goes to c of f of x exists if and only if The left and the right, the left and the right limits exist. The limit as x goes to c from the left of f of x exists. Uh, they exist and are equal to exists. The limit as x goes to c from the right exists and the limit as x goes to c from the left of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to c from the right of f of x. So this is something that we've already been saying, but now I'm just writing it down formally. So a limit exists if and only if its left limit exists, its right limit exists, and the left and right limits are the same. Okay. So then now, if and only if is a mathematician's phrase or logician's phrase, which means that these two things are equivalent. So then if I just sort of make a box around this one, right, so <laughs> my screen turns off, it always makes me get a little bit antsy. Okay, so then this box is equivalent to this box. They have the same meaning. <coughs> okay. So any questions before we move to the next topic? Okay, so the next topic is quite easy because of the way that I prepared you just now. So now, <coughs> I'm going to draw, we're going to talk about a, uh, a feature of a function that starts with C. Right? What, and I already wrote it down as the title, part of the title. So what feature is that? Continuity continuity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by drawing three pictures of graphs which are not continuous. So I'm going to introduce continuity to you by drawing three things that are not continuous. Okay. So not continuous. Okay, so then it is my practice to write CTS for continuous. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now, here is an example of a function that is not continuous. Okay, so then that, that is a big uh, dot indicating that that point is not there, a big open hole. So then you can sort of think of it like this. Right? If, you were on, if you were on the road, on an infinitesimally small <laughs> skateboard, okay, and someone removed an infinitesimal section of the road, you would fall in, right, if you were, if you were riding over it. So then this is not, this is an example of a graph that is not continuous at that point. So what do you think is necessary for a, for a graph to be continuous at a particular point? Right, Th the hole can't be there. A hole can't be there, but that's sort of like a colloquial thing, and this is with a graph, right? So if generally I have a function, what's necessary at that point? The function must be defined, right? So this is not continuous because it's not defined, because not 
I fired. Okay. <clears throat> so then, fine. I'll make a I'll make a graph which does have a definition. So how about it does this? Okay, so is the graph defined at the, at the obvious point? Yeah, it's defined there. It's defined there. Nevertheless, would you say that this, that this is continuous? Right, that this would result in a ride that would not be, result in injury? Right? <laughs> a skateboard ride. No, right? So then what's the problem here? What? I, may, I might have heard it. What was it? The limit doesn't exist. Ah, so this is not continuous. Not continuous because limit does not exist. Okay, okay, fine. So then the first example was not continuous because it wasn't defined. The second example was not continuous because the limit didn't exist. So, the third example I'm going to do is I'm going to draw something which is defined and which has a limit. So, is the function defined at the obvious point? Yes, it's defined there. Does the function have a limit there? Yes. It has a limit there. Would you say it's continuous? No. No, it's not. It's not continuous there. So then, what's the problem? The limit is not equal to the definition, right? So then we have these two things now. We can evaluate a function at a point, and we can compute a limit of a function at a point. Right? The problem with this graph is that those two things are not the same. They're not the same. So it's not continuous because the limit is not equal to the evaluation. Okay, so then these are these are the three examples that I'm going to give you of not continuous. So then what three things do you think are required for continuity at a point? A defi it has to have a definition. It has to have a limit. And those two things must be equal. Ah, so here we go. This is the definition of continuity. So this is continuity at a point. So f of x is continuous at x equal to c if three things. One, f of c is defined. Two, the limit as x goes to c of f of x exists. So. I'm just going to write a little note here just to sort of help you. It is almost always when I give you a function, I'll say determine if this function is continuous at 5 or whatever. Okay? All of, almost on every question what it's going to amount to is you're going to say, "Well, I need to t I need I now need to, to detect if the limit exists." And that will almost always mean you need to compute the limit from the left and also the limit from the right and check that they're equal. So this almost always means check left and right. Okay, the third requirement, the third requirement is that these two things, the previous two mentions, must be equal. Okay, so any question about this example, or this remark here, this definition of continuity? Any question? Okay, so then now, this 
right? I want to sort of, I want to sort of underline this. Right, that, that is the salient thing that's happening here. If you have a function, if you have a function that you can evaluate at a point, and you can also compute its limit at a point, and those two things are equal, then the function is continuous. So then, now, if a function is continuous, so now, what this means is that if a function is continuous, then all of these things, ex all of these things agree. So what I'm telling you is this, we've been talking about this notion of limit, right, trying to get our, a handle on these things, like you look at a graph and you can say, what is it doing from the left, what's it doing from the right, what's it doing exactly at the point? All of those answers are exactly the same when the function is continuous, right? So, as it turns out, the majority of functions that you've seen in your math career until now are continuous, right? So what's an example of a function that's continuous everywhere? A straight line. Straight lines are continuous everywhere. Okay, so then computing a limit of a line is the same thing as evaluating. There's no difference whatsoever. Okay, what's another example of a function which is continuous everywhere? A parabola, right? The, the parabola is actually a graph. So then a function that corresponds to a parabola is a quadratic. Okay, so then a quadratic is continuous everywhere. Okay, so then now lines and parabolas those are both graphs of what general class of functions that starts with P? Polynomial, right? So then polynomials, polynomials are continuous everywhere. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. So then now what we're going to do is just for a, just a, maybe one page, we're going to say when you do and when you do not have to compute a limit, right? So then sometimes it's nice to know when you can just say, uh, I don't need to actually compute a limit here, I just need to plug in. Okay. So, the general comment of this remark is if f of x is continuous at x is c, then don't compute a limit. <laughs> compute limit. Just plug in. Right, but that's something that we've sort of been doing loosely all along here. Okay, so then the next thing is, is that polynomials are continuous. Polynomials are continuous, which means that the limit as x goes to c of f of x, one of the consequences of that is that the limit as x goes to c of f of x is f of c for all polynomials. Right, so then if I give you a polynomial, you don't have to compute its limit, you just plug in. Okay, so what's another example of something that's continuous everywhere? What? Const okay, well a constant is a polynomial, right? So for example, the number 7 can be understood as the polynomial of order 0. That evaluates to 7 everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so then, uh, how about, how about sine and cosine? Sine of x, cosine of x, these are continuous. Okay, how about something else? What's another function that you've probably seen before? Mm, how about log, I'll say natural log of x. Natural log of x is continuous on its domain, and what is the domain of the log of x? Oh, come now. What is it? Positive values, right? Positive values. Okay, so then 5. What's something that's related to log? No, no discussion in a math class it includes log without including this other one. What? The exponential one, right? e to the x is continuous. All x. Okay, now I'm sort of going through a list of functions, right? Polynomials, trig functions, and things like this. These generally are called what? There's a class for all of these kinds of things. Anyone know? Starts with E. What is it? Elementary, right? So then generally all these things, just about all these functions that you've ever seen before in trigonometry and algebra and blah, 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 
Those are all elementary functions, and they are continuous everywhere on their domains. Okay, now the last comment is this that I'm going to make, and that is, is the following. Uh, if we have two functions, the limit and, and two limits, the limit as x goes to c of f of x is L, and the limit as x goes to c of g of x is k. So if you have these two things, then right, we need to know how to combine these things. So what do you suppose will happen if I compute the limit, the limit as x goes to c of f of x plus g of x? So what do you think that would be? L plus k, right? Good. And so it'll be the limit of f plus the limit of g. Okay, so then now I can write a little minus under here. Minus. I can say that it works for subtraction as well. All right, so then now, besides uh, adding functions, what else can I do? What is it? Product and quotient, right? Good. So then I can say f of x, g of x. Right, well then, the limit of the product is the product of the limits, like so. Okay, so then how about this one? Now this one is just a little bit slippery. So what is this? Ah, right, so then, it's this. But not always, it's this whenever, whenever k isn't zero. Right? So then when k is zero, it might be something else entirely, or it might not exist at all. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So for example, if l and k are both zero, if l and k are both zero, then that's an indeterminate form, and we, we've already seen examples where you had to factor things and cancel and blah, 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 blah. That sort of thing. <coughs> so any question about these things? Okay, good. Now, what this has to do, the reason why this is important is because of something like the following. So let's do one example, and then we can mostly be done with the discussion about continuity. <coughs> okay. What am I looking for here? Yeah, so we're just going to do a really an easy one. Okay, so f of x, f of x is equal to x if x is greater than 1. And it's equal to x squared if x is uh, less than or equal to 1. <coughs> okay, so is everybody with me? Okay, so now the instruction is determine everywhere f of x is continuous. Okay, that's the instruction. Okay, now there's some bad news here that I have to deliver to you. <laughs> the bad news is, is how many values of x are there? infinitely many. Ah, so we're going to, so if we're going to determine, for example, if, a func if, if this function is continuous at x is equal to 437, then we're going to have to check three things, right? Those three things, okay, for 437. And then we'll have to do that infinitely many times because there's infinitely many points. Okay, so we've got a long, we've got a lot of work to do, and we only have about three minutes to do it. Okay, so then, no, not really, right? So then, the way this kind of question goes is like so. So we'll draw a number line. Okay, now this is a piecewise defined function. So then what this is, is this is like a parabola is being joined to a line. You know, maybe they, maybe they were glued together, or maybe they, they miss and they don't glue together. Who knows? Okay, but where is that gluing point going to occur? At 1. Okay, now what definition goes to the left of 1? Not x. 
x squared, right? Look at the look at the definition very carefully. It's x squared. What goes to the right? X. Okay. So now let's consider. What if you're somewhere to the left of one? Okay, anywhere to the left of one. Then as far as as far as limit is concerned, as far as limit is concerned, if you are to the left of one and not going to one, but you're, you're going to somewhere to the left of one, this function behaves exactly like a parabola. It behaves exactly like x squared. And where is x squared continuous? Everywhere. It's continuous everywhere. So if you're away from one, if you're to the left of one, this function is continuous. How about if you're to the right of one? How about if you're to the right of one? This function behaves exactly like what? Like a straight line, x. And where is the straight line x continuous? Everywhere. Everywhere. So then that is the first statement that you need to make. You need to say, this function is continuous everywhere, except possibly what? except possibly x equal to 1, because x squared and x are elementary functions. OK, so then with one sentence, right, I eliminated infinitely many points. So how many points are left to, to discuss? Just one point is left to discuss. OK, so my que the question is now determine determine whether or not the function is continuous there. Now, how many things need to be checked? Three things. So we're going to check continuity at x equal to 1. So the first check, 1, is f of 1 defined? So this is a question. Okay, so it is defined. If it's defined, you should be able to look at the definition of the function and tell me which one of these two defines it. The x squared one. Mm -hmm. Good. So yes, right, f of 1 is equal to 1. Okay, now the next question. Does the limit as x go to 1 of f of x exist? So that's a question. Okay, so then how do you determine whether or not the limit exists? The left and right limits. Okay, so then from the left, the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x. Now, because I am explicitly saying that I'm going to 1 and because I have explicitly said that I am approaching from the left, I am allowed to select one of those definitions. Which definition am I allowed to select? x squared. So I can say that this is the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of x squared. Now, can you compute that limit? Yes, you can compute that limit because compute that function is continuous. And therefore, because that function is continuous, computing the limit is the same as evaluating. So this is just equal to 1. Okay, a similar argument that I'll just go through very quickly says the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of the 1 that I can select. I can select x, and that's equal to 1. So the limit from the left exists and is 1. The limit from the right exists and is 1. So what is the limit generally? 1. OK, now the last question. Okay, so the first one was, is it defined? We said, yes, it is defined, and it is equal to 1. We said, the second question, does the limit exist? We said, yes, the limit exists, and it, is e and it is equal to 1. So what is the last question? Is f of 1 equal to, so this is a question, is it equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x? So is, are they equal? Okay, so the answer is yes. So what is the conclusion? Yeah, so the, con the conclusion is that f of x is continuous at x is 1. Right? You have to write a conclusion. If you don't write a conclusion, the only thing the grader can assume is after all of that work, 
you couldn't figure out what's going on. Right? You couldn't figure it out. Okay, so any question about this uh, example? Okay, see you on Friday.